And let's have a look at this guy here. I'm gonna let you have a go at this without uh, my help for a minute, but let me just walk you through it and make sure you're doing the right steps. It says find the area of the region bounded by, gives you a new curve, y equals x cubed minus eight, and then it provides you a few other boundaries, not just the x-axis, but this time the y-axis is involved as well. So I'm gonna ask you, I might give you 60 to 90 seconds. Remember, it doesn't need to be beautiful. It just needs to be close enough to what it's supposed to look like so that you can identify the right area and do the next step, identify the integral. So here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. Um, go ahead and actually do a rough sketch of this. And then as you get to the identify integral point, we'll then pick up together and I'll show you how I would uh, have a go at this. So I'm gonna hit pause on me. You have a go for a minute and then we'll come back together to have a look at the solution. What I've drawn for you over here on the left hand side is, uh, this is what the cubic function generally looks like. This is the rough shape of it, right? Now, if I were graphing y equals x cubed, it would look something like this, right? You would have the center of the curve, center, inverted commas, right there on the origin. But I don't have y equals x cubed. I've got y equals x cubed minus eight. So if you think all the way back to the beginning of last year when we we're looking at functions and how to graph functions when they've been shifted, you can see that minus eight is just gonna bring this guy down eight units, okay? So I'm gonna put this down as negative eight over here. And what that means is I now can see quite clearly what's the area, or what is the region rather, that's bounded by this blue curve and the x-axis and the y-axis. It's gonna be this section in here. This is the part that I'm after. Okay, so you can see uh, part of this is unnecessary. Let's get rid of that guy down there. All right, now if this is the part that I'm interested in, I've sketched, now I need to identify an integral. So help me out guys, I've got area equals to, and I'm gonna write an integral here. What are my boundaries going to be? Has anyone already gone and worked them out? The lower boundary is a lot easier than the upper boundary. Anyone tell me? Thanks, Sasha. I like the question mark at the end there, just to hedge your bets there. Okay, good. Yes, Yvonne, got some confirmation. The lower boundary is zero because I'm starting from here. You can see that's the left-hand part of my green area at x equals zero. And then you need to work out what this guy is. Now, that's an x-intercept, so you're trying to solve for x cubed minus eight equals zero. So this is x cubed equals eight. So you take the cube root of both sides and that gives you two, which to confirm you, Sasha, gives us an upper boundary of two. So fantastic. I've got zero to two, but then I want to think about this function in here, x cubed minus eight dx. Now, I want to pause here, right? Um, yes, the x-intercept is in y equals zero. That's half solve for x equals two. So well done, Abby. Now, what I've done here is this integral actually isn't going to give us the right area, because if you look at it closely, this integral is in a particular place. I want you to think back to when we were looking at properties of definite integrals, right? This integral is bounded between both axes and also the curve, but importantly, look at its position, look at its location, it's beneath the x-axis. So this, when I evaluate it, is going to give me, not the area, it's going to give me the negative of the area, what we call the signed area, okay? Now, if you think back, the question has nothing to do with positives or negatives. It just says up the top there, find the area, right? So therefore, it's up to us to sort of identify the fact that in fact, this is not the right integral, this is the right integral. So that minus sign, I would put in right at the outset. And you know, Rahul, you suggested, should we chuck in an absolute value? Now, some people will do this. Uh, let me go back to that whole deletion. Some people will put in absolute values like so. There's nothing wrong with that. You will get exactly the right answer because in this case, you're just gonna put a minus sign out the front to make your negative turn into a positive. Now, for reasons that are gonna become clearer a bit later on, I'm going to encourage you not to put an absolute value sign, but rather to actually deliberately say, I know where this is. I can see it from my sketch. It's beneath the x-axis, so I'm gonna put in a negative out the front. Um, the reason why is sometimes people put in absolute value signs basically because because they don't know what they're doing. And they're like, I think things are meant to be positive. I'm just gonna put some absolute value signs here and hopefully I get the right answer at the end. Um, as you'll see for some examples we're gonna get to later, that's not always the case. And just throwing absolute value signs around things is not just gonna make the answer turn out correctly. It's much better 
to know that this is below the axis. And in fact, I'm even gonna write that. Let me move this aside so it's a bit smaller here. There we go. To identify from the sketch that this is an area beneath the axis and therefore put a negative out the front. So I'm gonna write A equals negative this integral since region is beneath the X axis. Now, to the similar point of um, our units before, right? Can you, do you have to write that? The short answer is no, you don't have to write it, especially as you get very um, familiar and comfortable with this. You'll be like, yeah, I, I see that pretty clearly. Sometimes the diagram will make it very obvious to you. However, we're not at that point yet. We're still fairly early on in this. And I think this is a much clearer communication of why does this minus sign just you know, randomly appear? It's like Pokemon, you know, a wild negative sign appeared. Why is it there? There's a reason for it, right? So I wanna say the reason that I know because I wanna communicate that clearly. All right, so sketch done. Identify the integral. At this point, you've probably been looking at my work and thinking, I know what to do with this. So maybe you guys can help me catch up. I've got the minus sign out the front. I've got uh, an x to the four on four, take away eight x. Then you've got a zero and a two there. Uh, minus sign stays out the front and then I'm going to start evaluating. So I've got two to the four on four minus eight lots of two, take away zero. Uh, minus sign again, two to the power of four is 16. So 16 on four is gonna be four. Uh, take away eight times two is 16. And so I've got a negative 12 on the inside of the bracket. So that's negative of negative 12. So I'm getting 12. Are you getting some confirmation? Have people got this answer as well? Or have you got different answers? Can you post it in the comments for me? Okay, thank you, Eddie. Wonderful, all right. I was having a moment of panic because I know Sarang posted a different answer earlier, so maybe he was answering something else. So, just to neaten out, thank you, Mark Veer, I'm gonna conclude, right? The area is 12 units squared. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Adrina. Okay, yeah, good, good save, Sarang. Very, very smooth. All right, so be careful, right? The sketch helps you. When you identify the integral, this is the place to say, oh, okay, this is a negative, so therefore I should put a minus sign out the front to cover that, and then we get to the, uh, the combine and conclusion stage. Okay, so a third example here before, yeah, we're gonna have a go at some exercises after this. Need to remember where I was up to in the lesson. This guy is the most complicated of all three, um, and we're going to have a go at using that last step of combination here. Now, Yvonne, just to your question, I thought we could only find the area when it's underneath the curve. Ah, okay, good question. All right, let me address that before I um, go to this question. Um, we could only find the area underneath the curve. Now, we use the, um, the, the phrase area under the curve kind of as a, um, kind of as a shorthand. What we really mean is the area bounded to an axis. Um, so in this case, let's go up to uh, this guy here, right? The area bounded to the x-axis, it just so happens, is also an area under the curve. But when we get to this guy here, uh, the area bounded to the axis is not under the curve, it's above the curve, right? Uh, and I know that's a little bit weird. We're gonna dig a bit further into this uh, later during this double, but the key is that area under the curve is actually kind of a shorthand. The, the more technically way, correct way to say it is, it's the area bounded to an axis. So that might actually mean below area under the curve, or it might mean above, as in this case here. So wherever the axis is, it's gonna go from the curve to there, whether that's up or down. 